This video is made special for beginners with resin. Don't fast forward, don't put me on pause. I've got a lot of really great information to share with you and it's gonna help a lot. Hi everybody, it's Janet Rockware for Moon Cusser Art. I'm gonna be doing a series of tutorials for those really early beginners that are starting to work in resin. Um, if you've watched any of my videos in the past or you're new to it, um, first of all, go check out my other tutorials. Maybe you'll see something you really like and you wanna try. But I also, um, I try to be very informative and share some of the things that I've learned in the past. So one of the things I want to share with you that I think is uh, really important is how to measure your resin. So it's important to be really precise in your measurements. You can see the cups that I'm using here have absolutely no markings. Um, they're just nice clear, which I like because I can see my uh, tinted resin in here. I have a hair already stuck on my cup, making me crazy because of static electricity. You guys see that? See how I hate animal fur? I love my animals, but I hate the fur. <laughs> anyway, um, so they're clear cups. There's no markings on them. And that's cool by me because I'm going to do my own measurement. So I'm going to share with you my process. The resin that I'm using is a one-to-one -one ratio. So what that means is whatever the measurement of hardener or the epoxy resin component, they're going to be equal amounts. So this is how I get there. I'm using a scale. And I'm going to get some precise measurements. These are 16 ounce cups. I want to end up with 15 ounces because I want room to stir. And that's all I'm going to need for my project. So I'm going to start with my scale, zeroed out. And then I'm going to put one of my cups right on there. You can see the cup has a measurement. So I'm gonna zero out my scale again. So now I'm going to weigh my water. I always keep a jug of water covered to keep dust out of it. And I'm gonna pour that to find my 7.5 ounces. And let's see how quickly it fills up. So I'll just tweak it. Whoop, there we go. 7.5. Okay. So then I'm gonna take my handy dandy marker. I know my surface top is level, and I'm just gonna come in and I get down. I'm on my knees right now. You guys can't see me off off camera. And I'm just gonna make my waterline mark right there. So that's 7.5 ounces. I don't need my scale again because one cup is going to be for hardener and the other cup is going to be for the epoxy resin. So I'm going to take my 7.5 ounces from this cup. I'm just going to dump it over here. Tap it out to get any drips to drop in there. And again, taking my marker, all I'm going to do is get down on my knees one more time. And I'm going to make my mark. Come back here so you guys can see a little better. Touch that. So now I'm going to find a clean spot. And I'm going to make my level mark at 7.5 ounces. Okay. So... Now I've got that, and 
it's going to come up, you know, about there because again, these are 16 ounce cups. So I know I'm going to have a little bit of room to do my stirring of my resin. And I got to grab a paper towel. Because I want to take the moisture out of there. I'm just going to swipe that through there real quick. Kind of eyeball it in the light. I don't see any dust in there. That's my good mark. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this cup. I'm going to dry it out. Water's not going to hurt my epoxy, my resin. Um, but, you know, depending on what I use in there, when you're putting products into your resin, you have to watch your quantities. So anytime, like you're, if you're adding, um, let's say, a fluid acrylic paint, you want to keep your percentage of paint less than 10% of the resin that you've got. So it's just me being, you know, taking off away any kind of problems. So now I always begin with my hardener and I'll tell you why. I start with the hardener because the hardener is actually more fluid. And then the other one is going to be my epoxy component that I'm going to add in there. Okay. So like I said, we put the marks at 7.5 on each cup and we measured that exactly by the water. So now, I gotta get a stick. There's my stick. Yeah, that's gonna be too short for doing <clears throat> the big cup. So hold on a second. There we go. Bigger sticks so that I don't have to stick my fingers in there. Got my nitro gloves on. Two clean sticks. And I'm going to pour out my hardener. Uh, on my tabletop here, um, one of the things I like to use on a tabletop, it's uh, fairly inexpensive. And I can replace it as often as I need to is uh, freezer paper. I like it because it's white and it's clean. So, and I thought I'd make sure that I had that down here for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So now, I hope the shadows aren't too bad from the light. I'm going to pour. See how fluid that comes out? It's much more fluid than the epoxy component. So this is actually the part B. But I, like I said, I always start with part B. And then now I'm getting close to my line. So I'm going to get down on my knees again so that I'm looking directly at my line. Because if you're looking down on it, you know how sometimes there can be that distortion and I don't want the distortion. All right, so there's my hardener. I'm gonna set it back here. And now I'm gonna pour out this cap out of here. It's really important not to mix up your caps. If you mix up your caps, and you put your hardener cap on top of your epoxy bottle, <laughs> you're not going to be happy. So again, this is the part A, the epoxy part. Now watch how this pours out. It pours out like honey. 
You guys see it? I'm trying not to block your light. But see how thick that? It, it just kind of piles up in there. And my room temperature today is at 72 degrees. And I like that temperature. So um, that's what it looks like. All right, so again, I'm gonna get down on my knees because I'm almost at my line. And I'm gonna get as precise a view as I can. And you have to watch because it's pouring out like that honey look and it's going to build up a little bit. All right. That's going to do it. Get that off the edge. Okay. Okay. Get rid of this bottle. Okay. So now... I want to show you guys before I combine it what's going on here. So I'm going to turn on my scale again. Now remember the cup itself has weight to it. It's 0.03. My scale's not zeroed out. So just for demonstration for you guys, I'm going to put that cup on there. And again, I'm going to zero out my scale. All right. Now, I'm going to show you how much the hardener weighs. 7.0. How'd that happen? You guys watched me pour the water and get my 7.5 measurement. All right, now let's see how much the epoxy weighs. Look at that, 8.6. Do you see what can happen? <laughs> so if you look at these sitting side by side, I mean, those marks are spot on, guys. They're, they're level. They are level. And that's why I like to measure it by water first so that I'm going to get that exact amount. There's the empty cup, zeroed out. Hardener, 7.0. Not the 7.5 we measured. Epoxy, 8.5. Now, it's more than or less than it was now. It's 8.6. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> Crazy, right? This stuff has more weight by volume. And that is why I measure it the way I measure it. So... I'm hoping that this really helps you guys because I've been seeing a lot of people in my Facebook groups complaining about, you know, they're not getting their mixes right and uh, having soft spots, which will, which is what will happen. So that's what made me want to do this. Okay, so now we know the consistency I showed you. It's very thick. You guys see how that reacts in there? It's slow to move. And like I said, the room temperature is right where I want it to be, so I'm okay with that. And this is very fluid, right? I can wiggle it and it floats all around. So I put my epoxy into the hardener. I'm going to try to do this without blocking your camera view as best I can. And I'm going to scrape my sides because you can see how sticky this one is. If I put it in the center of my cup, 
it's gonna push the hardener to the sides and the hardener is more fluid and I'm gonna get a better mix. And that's what it's all about. It's all about getting a better mix. We want to not waste a drop of this stuff. It's not cheap. So, let me get this scraped off as best I can, because again, I'm trying to do as precise a measurement as I can can't get every single speck out of here, but I can do my best to get as much out as I can. So bear with me. I hope you guys have an aha moment. Um, maybe you're not completely new to resin. Maybe you've been doing a few and you're finding, you know, you're having a little bit of a soft spot in your resin or something. And... This could be why. All right, let me just forget about you guys in the camera for a minute here and focus on what I'm doing. Get that stuff off of there as best I can. Like I said, it can't be perfect, but you know, that's pretty good. Just a little bit left in there. If I wanted to, I could always pour it back in here, but I tend not to do that. I tend to just stick with one cup after I've got it going. So there's my scrape. All right, I'm abandoning that stick. Another paper towel. Turn my fingertips off. And another clean stick, and I'm gonna. If, can you can you guys see how all the epoxy settled? I can't tip the cup too much, but the epoxy dropped down to the bottom. But I know this is the best way to mix it. I've done this so many times now that. This is the way that works for me. So I'm just gonna start slow. I don't want it to get messy or anything. I'm just gonna stir. And can you see how it's kinda trying to stay out of the light of that? Uh, it's kinda got like a pearl look to it. Can you guys see that? So you wanna keep mixing until you get those, they call them striations, I think. Maybe I'm not pronouncing it correctly, I don't know. But you can see like the swirl in there. And this brand, I mix it for three minutes, at least. It's okay if I mix it a little bit more. It just shortens up my time that I have to manipulate it in my work. So, Right now, what I'm doing is I'm going down the sides and I'm scraping and pushing it into the middle. And then I'm coming around and scraping the sides with that flat edge of that pop stick. You know, you can't just stir it one way. It's not going to get done. Now I'm putting my stick at the bottom of the cup. And I'm really working at the bottom to make sure I don't have anything left at the way, way bottom that I didn't get to. Probably could have used a little bit bigger stick, but it's okay. Not bad. All right. So it's really getting clear now. There's some bubbles in there, but that's okay. The bubbles will get worked out as I'm using my torch on the resin. All right, so I'm just stirring that up and I'm watching, looking at how clear it's getting and it's really doing a nice job. So keep going a little bit more, but it's really combining. So that hardener really starts working with that epoxy 
making it start the reaction. Everything becomes more consistent and fluid. And this resin, I've got about 30 minutes total working time. So I'm going to do a couple last stirs, do the scrape on the bottom, zigzag now. Turn the cup and zigzag this way at the bottom. One more time around. Can't emphasize how important it is to be careful with prepping your resin and preparing it, mixing it up. It all pays out in the end. All right. I'm happy with that. I'm going to take you guys, i got to get my gloves off so I can touch my phone again. And I'm going to bring you down so you can look in there. Let's show you the side. See how clear that is? It's a, it's a really nice resin. Look at how pretty that looks sitting in there. You have a pretty little cup. Okay? All the bubbles, and they'll be gone. It's a little bit, you know, it's not crystal clear, but there's no striations in there. It's consistent all the way through. All right, that's it. I'm off to go do some pouring. I hope this helped, and uh, see you on the flip side. Now don't forget to comment and like and subscribe. There's going to be more of these videos for beginners coming. Enjoy and remember, give it a try.